Adolf Loos was one of the most important personalities in the history of modern architecture. He was born here in Brno, but during his lifetime he worked mostly in Vienna, in Prague, in Pilsen, in Paris, in other cities. This building, the residence of Victor Bauer family, was in the 1920s almost completely furnished according to design by Adolf Loos. So what happened in the decades that followed? Why is this building so little known to the public today? Let's have a look. At the end of the 19th century, when Adolf Loos was growing up in Benno, it was a prosperous industrial town. But in the cultural sense, it was only a small town strongly influenced by its proximity to Vienna. The situation changed completely in the 1920s, when Brno became the second largest city in the Czechoslovakian state. Many new public institutions were established and the city was massively rebuilt in Bauhaus style to meet the needs of the day. Adolf Loos in the 1920s still worked and lived in Vienna, but he visited Brno quite often and the young generation of architects was strongly influenced by his texts and by his lectures. During his visits to Brno, Adolf Loos also supervised the work on the Bauer's residence. Only shortly after the works on the interiors of the Bauer's residence were almost completely finished, the representatives of the city started to build the new modern exhibition center. And its building, in the year 1928, completely surrounded the Bauer's residence. That's why the Bauer Chateau is now one of the buildings at the Brno Exhibition Center. Bauer's family residence is a historical building from the beginning of the 19th century, but the core of the building is even older, maybe from the Baroque period. Moritz Bauer bought the building in 1850, and his grandson, Victor Bauer, inherited it in 1911. Since 1919, he lived here permanently with his wife and their four children, and that's why he, at the beginning of the 1920s, invited Adolf Loos to design the interiors of the building for him. Let's go inside to see the interiors. Now we are in the main hall of Bauer's residence, which was supposed to serve as a dining room and a drawing room. What is typical for, for Loos work here is the architectural composition, the symmetrical composition consisting of this main heating element, uh, accompanied by the built-in cupboards on both sides symmetrically. The similar symmetrical composition can be also seen in this part of the room. And here we have the simple design elements which were installed here to give the impression, the idea, how the room, how the room was supposed to look like with uh, the inbuilt sofas proposed by Adolf Loos. And of course the window is typical design of Adolf Loos. The most valuable element in this room is original marble cladding. It's Italian marble called Cipollino because of its typical layers resembling the onion. Adolf Loos combined this type of marble with plaster friends running around the building with the ancient motif. As for another built-in elements, built-in features, uh, I would like to mention these flower pots under the windows. Unfortunately, we don't have here the flowers anymore because in the 1950s, uh, the additional heating was installed in the room and it was placed instead of the flowers. As a decoration, Adolf Loos used in this room the paintings. They were the historical oil paintings and they were the family heritage. The room was illuminated by several types of lights. Uh, chandeliers were the simple glass discs. We don't have them here anymore. And what we have here are 3D printed replicas of electric scones 
Originally, he were the electric scones in the shape of swans in the style of Louis XVI. Uh, we think it's important to point out that Adolf Loos used this uh, historical pieces because he also designed the entire room in this building in the Louis XVI style. It was the main bedroom, the, room, the bedroom of Margaret Bauer. The form bedroom of Margaret Bauer is another room in the building where original furniture designed by Adolf Loos is still preserved. From the correspondence with local company who worked on the commission, we know it was completed before 1923. Loos decorated here the building furniture in Louis XVI style, but of course inside the wardrobes all the necessary modern equipment was hidden. Loss also designed the terrace, which is here accessible directly from the main bedroom. The only piece of the furniture which is missing is the bed, because since the 1950s, where the building became the part of the exhibition center, the room was used as the small meeting room or the office. The small exhibition we have here is based mostly on the historical photographs. Many of them are photographs from everyday life of Bauer family. Some were taken by Victor Bauer himself. Because the chateau was expropriated by the state after the Second World War and later became the part of the exhibition center, it served for many years as a restaurant for the exhibition visitors, as a canteen for employees, as the office building. And today, it's difficult to think about it as about the home of the family, about the home of the family whose members really lived in the interiors designed by Adolf Loos, the pioneer of the modern living. I am very glad I could show you today the building and share with you part of its exceptional history.